Okay, this session is going to be about the armature modifier and this is not going to be a rigging tutorial because rigging is a very very intense progress and it takes a lot of time and a lot of experience and you probably have to find tutorials out there that uh, tell you more about um, complex rigs. I'm just going to talk about the armature modifier and a few steps a beginner will have to consider because uh, otherwise he'll get some very weird results. So, if I, s I have created this armature that should enable Suzanne to move her ears, it's very simple and very basic and I have to select my object first, then my armature, shift selected, then press Control P and I got a bunch of options. If I just select object that is not going to do much, it would be the same as if I uh, used an empty. So no armature deform here, so armature deform. I'm not sure what just armature deform does, I think it's the same thing. Oh no, that's uh, just armature deform. That just creates the armature deform modifier for you without creating any vertex groups. So if I select with empty groups, that means for every bone name I have over here, you can see the bones here, all this right ear, is that the right ear? That's the left ear, right? Left ear. Um, for every bone name in this armature, Blender will create one vertex groups, and there, those are the old ones, and uh, they're going to be stored over here in the vertex groups, and they are necessary for the uh, uh, modifier to distort your mesh. So in most of the other modifiers, you didn't need the vertex groups, but you had the options. This time, you actually do need them. Then um, automatic weights, which is I'm going to select, just means that um, Blender will um, guess how much this modifier should or this bone should deform your mesh and where. So it will do the weight painting for us automatically. And then there's another option with envelope weights. Um, that is, I hardly ever use that, but I can show you how to. So I'm going to select with automatic weights and. Just like that, we have an armature that actually deforms Suzanne, which is great. So, um, to show you what the envelopes are, if I go in the armature settings over here and I select envelope, you can see this gray area around the bone, and that's actually the envelope. If you um, have envelopes selected over here, which I don't, by default is selected, then your modify, then your um, armature will deform your mesh no matter what the vertex groups are if you uh, turn on envelopes uh, vertex groups but turn on envelopes okay that doesn't work um, you have to turn off the envelopes the vertex groups in the modifier settings as well so if I use the envelopes blender will take into account this gray rim around it and then deform the mesh accordingly so I usually uncheck that because Sometimes you set up your vertex groups and then still stuff is moving that you didn't want to and that is because the envelopes interfere and they sort of add up. So um, make sure to uncheck that if you're a beginner and not sure what to do. And um, let's go to the modifier settings. The modifier settings have, um, you can bind it to the vertex groups and the bone envelopes. Now nothing is happening if I bind to the envelopes then it's exactly doing what I told you earlier. It's only taking into account the vertices that are inside this envelope. And uh, I'm going to switch this again. Then I can preserve the volume. If I preserve the volume then Blender will do its best guessing how the modifier would deform for example a balloon full of water because you can not compress or expand water if you squeeze a balloon it will keep the same volume at all times so um, I'm not sure how well this works with complex meshes but I guess the button wouldn't be there if it doesn't work very well so the next thing we're going to have a look at is the vertex group field over here because uh, we've already set up a bunch of vertex groups and there's another field here so I'm not exactly sure what this um, button does, I have to admit. I just created a vertex group called it Influence and it's uh, um, over 
over here and I just selected some vertices randomly and I checked influence and I think what it does is if you use influence the influence part group it will then um, keep the influence from being affected depending on the particles uh, on the vertice, vertex's weight so if I invert this you can see that um, something really weird happens and that is because some of the influence um, some of the influence group particles uh, vertices, sorry, um, they stay in place even though they are theoretically affected by the bone and if you invert this they uh, other ones will stay in place the ones that are not part of the group and if I delete this our mesh is behaving normal I think if you use this uh, influence group you already know a lot about rigging so I'm not going to go into detail here and then there's the multi-modifier checkbox if I copy this modifier then everything I do with this bone will be done twice and this is of course you wouldn't use the uh, normal uh, the same armature on a um, on the same object twice but sometimes it happens that you um, just unparent this or at least that happened to me I don't want to um, accuse you of anything here and I accidentally had three mod three armature modifiers and didn't realize it in the stack so if your object is behaving weird that's probably because you've undone a couple of things and then the modifier didn't get delete it delete it okay um, if now this armature bends down the ear halfway and then this armature modifier bends the ear twice the way it's supposed to. So if you check multi modifier it will move um, it will not add to the previous armature but it will um, take it into account and creates uh, and create a regular result. If that makes any sense. Um, this modifier is not very important if you're using or this checkbox is not very important if you're using only one armature per mesh. So um, one final thing about to say about the armature modifier of course it's always a good idea to have a lot of geometry to work with but it also makes things cumbersome so what I usually do is I add a subsurf modifier after the armature has deformed the mesh because then if you get harsh edges from the armature like these they look well, actually they don't look that bad okay well, it's hard to do. This is a very nice model. It's hard to make him deform him horribly. So, um, but it's a good idea to put your subsurf modifier behind your armature because then folds and some stuff that you don't want it to create, didn't want to create, uh, gets sort of corrected. And if you feel like your mesh is not deforming well at all, then you might want to put a subsurf modifier with um, the, the subdivisions of one in front of your armature modifier. I guess that's it for the settings. This uh, was a very, very basic rigging tutorial. And um, the next time we're going to have a look at the cast modifier.